Okay. Okay. Today we're going to go over some typical lab values that you may see on the NCLEX and in classroom on your test. So, uh, we'll start with pH. Everyone should know pH. And pH is 7.35 to 7.45. Okay? Sodium is almost similar. If you change the 7 to a 1 and take the decimal out, you get 135 to 145. If we were to look at carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide would be, it would take the ones off of sodium and we get 35 to 45. There's also a pattern here that the 2 in carbon dioxide, we got a 2, 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, Something along those lines might help you remember as well. Okay, we've got uh, CO3 here. And um, what we'll do is we see the 3. So this might also give us a clue into what the values will be. Um, the value is 24 to 26. And we can see 2, 3, 4, or 2 times 3 is 6. Something along those lines might help us there. Oxygen, everyone should remember, it's either greater, it typically is greater than 95. Some books will say greater than 90. Some of these values may be off depending upon the book you read, but remember that we're just looking for a ballpark figure because on the NCLEX, a, one of those values will be way off, and then we'll know to select that that, that value is the, is the wrong uh, lab value. If we look at potassium here, or K, or potassium, I kind of remember a bum, a bum smoking three to five joints a day. So we have three to five, three point five, and typically it'll be about five point three or five point zero, something along those lines. So we'll go ahead and fill album in, in real quick, and that would be also the same value. It would be 3.5 to 5. Something along those something along those lines in there. Okay, chlorine. If we're hot and we want to jump into the uh, public swimming pool, it's got chlorine. It'll probably be about 100 degrees outside. So, 100 is the normal value for chlorine, but the range is typically 95 to 105. Now, I just have to remember creatinine here starts with 0.6, and if we double that number, we get 1.2. So, the typical range for creatinine would be 0.6 to 1.2. On calcium, calcium we typically should drink. In, in water, we should drink about 8 to 12 glasses of the water a day. So if we think of, cows, of the milk, we're going to drink 8 to 12 glasses of milk a day. These are all foods here. We'll just have a little game with it. Now protein, if you go to a uh, restaurant and order a steak or a chicken breast, uh, typically that piece of meat weighs 6 to 8 ounces. So Protein's value is going to be 6 to 8. Bun, if we had to run down to the 7-Eleven and back to get hot dog buns because we were out, we would go to 7-Eleven twice, so it would be 7-22, or 7 to 22 would be for bun. Now, ditch and lithium is typically around... 1 to 2. Some say ditch is 0.5 to 2, but uh, one point, if we remember, if we group both of these together on a test, we'll probably get those correct. Dilatin and theopylene is, we multiply the 1 into 2 times 10, and we get 10 to 20, and that's tip, the typical value range for uh, dilatin and theopylene. A, um, on blood pressure, 
blood pressure, the typical range for blood pressure, would a, a normal blood pressure would be 120 over 80. And we can have fun with that. We could say the glute, we could say the heart rate would be 80 to 120, 80 to 120, we'll just switch these numbers around, 80 to 120 and glucose 80 to 120 for now. A respiratory, if we take the 12 in the blood pressure uh, off the 120 and the 20 from the 120, we have a respiratory value of 12 to 20. That's normal respiratory. Now, I said to keep those values just uh, like that for a minute. We'll tweak these just a little bit. I'm going to make uh, the heart rate... Uh, I'm going to make the heart rate 100. I'm going to make make glucose 100 for a minute. So if we could think of a, of the ranges from 80 to 100 for heart rate and glucose, we'll go and be in the ball right ballpark. Some some books say glucose is 70 to 110. So if we subtract 10 from the heart rate and add 10 we would get 70 to 110 for glucose. Eh, that's a good ballpark. Now, on hemoglobin, if we can think hemo or homosexuality, when a woman uh, learns that she, she could possibly have feelings for the opposite sex, she's usually 12 to 16 years old, and a little bit higher for men. The men is typically 14 to 20. And you notice that the, the values are only off about by two or two years, and there's a there's a difference of four between. Uh oh, okay. Sorry about that. About. <sighs> 14 to 18 for men. I apologize. Okay, the white blood count. White blood count has a four to five digit number. So the first four digit number is 5,000. The five digit number, we're going to double this. And so it's going to be 10,000 for white blood count. A red blood cells is going to have a six digit number and it's going to be 200,000 to 400,000. Again, the, the number has been doubled. On platelets, it's going to be a seven digit number. So we're going to say four, a seven digit number would be millions. So Platelets are four to five million. Now we'll go down here to Kumadin and Heparin real quick. On, on Kumadin, let's figure out which one's PT or which one's PTT. And how I remember it is that the TT here and PTT makes an H. So I know that PTT goes to Heparin. So PTT here and PT here. And on the seconds we're going to have to try to remember that. I, I believe this is uh, 10 to 15 something along those lines and this is 30 to 45. I don't have a good way to remember this. Some books say this is 10 to 12. The, now let's look at the antidotes. If we can think of the Kumadin having the sound K, Kumadin, we get vitamin K. And on heparin, if we can sound out the hep, the P, we've got protamine sulfate. Okay, now we'll go back with the specific gravity and specific gravity you should just simply remember 0 
0.01 to, or I'm sorry, 1.01 to 1.03. And I remember that here in town we have two radio stations, 101 and 103. And finally, one other thing we need to remember is uh, ABCs. The air, ABCs are airway, breathing, and circulation, but we'll save that for another, another lecture. Now why is this important? Well, I can tell you if you can remember these lab values you can get a lot you can remember a lot of a lot of things. If uh, let's first look at alkalosis and acidosis, okay? So we'll look at those values. We'll take these two away. Alright. If if once you go lower on pH on pH, you you'll go it gets uh, acidic. You're, you become more acidic when you go higher on your pH. Once you go lower, you go acidic. When you go ho higher than 7.45, you go more alkaline. Okay? So, what does this mean? We're going to remember if we go to Europe, and one of the places that we would want to go is to Rome. R O M E Rome. And Ro Rome stands for its respiratory opposite, metabolic, equal. So, if we have a pH value less than 7.35, we will have some type of acidosis. The pH is less than 7.35. If we have a pH that's greater than 7.45, we're going to have an alkalosis value. Now how do we determine whether it's respiratory or metabolic? Well we're going to have a set of lab values and say we have a pH of 7.2 and an HCO3 value of 25 and a carbon dioxide value of 47. Now let's take a look at this. The pH is 7.2. Does that fall within a range, our normal range? No, it does not. Is this acidosis or alkalosis? Now this particular one will be acidosis because it falls below 7.35. Let's take a look at the HCO3 count. Is this value between this standard range. Yes it is, so we're going to leave it alone. That's normal. We'll just discard that for a second. Is the carbon dioxide value within the normal range? No it is not. Is it greater or less than the normal range? Well it's greater. So we have a pH that's less and we have a carbon dioxide the pH is less than the standard normal value range. The carbon dioxide is greater than the normal value range. Now if one's going down and one's going up, they're going in opposite directions. So if they're opposite, this is going to be a type of respiratory. So the answer is going to be some type of respiratory alkalosis. I'm sorry, it's going to be respiratory acidosis. 
Well, what does that mean? What do we typically do for someone that's respiratory acidosis? They have a, a greater value, they have large amounts of carbon dioxide. We have to get that carbon dioxide down. Well, one thing we might do is administer oxygen. We're going to dilute the carbon dioxide. What would happen if we had a large amount, or if we had a small amount of carbon dioxide? You wouldn't administer oxygen. We want to get the carbon dioxide up. What? Any ideas? One thing we can do is breathe in a paper bag, and that's going to give the carbon di that's going to build carbon dioxide in the bag, and it's going to give it back to us. Now that's how to build up carbon dioxide. Let's see. So, what I would do on the NCLEX, first of all, remember these values any way you can. Have fun with it. Play around. It, they're going to help you answer lots and lots and lots of questions on the, lab, on the lab values and what you would do for someone. I think that's it for now. Bye-bye.